Pastor Ray Ortland came out recently and endorsed Kamala Harris, only to claim that his post was taken out of context. But it has started a discussion on what Christians should do when it comes to voting and whether or not pastors should be endorsing candidates that promote that which is specifically forbade in Scripture. Welcome back to the Good Fight Radio Show. I'm your host, Chad Davidson of Good Fight Ministries. And on today's episode, we're going to be looking at a recent thread post by Pastor Ray Ortland and his endorsement, or at least telling people what he's going to be doing regarding voting for Kamala Harris. And to discuss this very important topic as really what should Christians be doing regarding all of this, specifically should we be endorsing this sort of thing, is none other than the president and founder of Good Fight Ministries and pastor of Blessed Hope Chapel in Simi Valley, California, Pastor Joe Schimmel. Yeah, Chad, I'm absolutely blown away that you have, you know, those who would profess to be uh, evangelical conservative Christians uh, voting for a woman, Kamala Harris, who believes in the mass murder. It's okay to have a mass murder of of babies uh, and is fine with the destruction of children's bodies for the sake of being woke. Uh, in the transgender movement, and who is very anti-Israel, who as of this shooting, we're not sure where it's at when you guys are watching this, but they're being bombarded by the most massive ballistic missile attack in human history, all part of prophecy. When Netanyahu came to speak, she was on the other side. Uh, She never even showed up. Congress is there. Typically, she'd be in back of the speaker there. She didn't even show up. And if you're a professing Christian that you can endorse someone like that, just blows me away. Yeah, Joe, I, I I think, and for those who don't know, Ray Ortland is a, a fairly popular pastor. He has a couple of sons that are popular writers as well with the Gospel Coalition, uh, Coalition and so forth. I know Gavin Ortland had written for them and Dane. Uh, and, you know, when I saw this, I was seeing it up on, on Twitter, but Ray had posted a couple of years ago, I'm getting off of Twitter and so forth. So I guess he's posting on the Facebook version known as Threads of Twitter. And this is what he wrote. He said, Never Trump, period. This time Harris, period. Always Jesus, period. Now, we're going to be showcasing that you can't be always Jesus and also this time Harris, but uh, I, I will, we'll get into that a little bit later. But Joe, I want to talk about what he did afterwards because this is what he said as a follow-up. After debating back and forth with people of why you would vote for Kamala Harris, he said, quote, I have deleted a post from earlier today because it has been mis." interpreted. I should have foreseen it. My fault. Now, Joe, b- before I ask you wh- why someone would endorse Harris, um, the misinterpretation of these three sentences, uh, maybe he's saying people are misinterpreting it, saying, I love Kamala Harris or something. But the truth is, you're a pastor who is telling people you're going to be voting for this candidate. And you've already gone over just a few things. But this candidate clearly I mean, could not get around it, promotes and pushes things that God specifically por- forbid- forbids. I would say, as you already mentioned, the dripping blood of the innocent children that she pushes forward. And sadly enough, so many fake Christians, that's what you are, Steph Curry and others, who have literally and specifically said, I am endorsing Kamala Harris because she fights for women's rights. What are women's rights? What, oh, hey, Joe, we should fight for women's rights too, but not the ones they're talking about. They're talking about reproductive rights, which are not reproductive rights. Most women, almost to the 99 percentile, have the right to choose who they sleep with and when they sleep with them. Yeah, right? that's not the question. The question is whether it's okay to murder an innocent baby or not. That's there the question that they're they're after. Uh, it's interesting you're saying you're 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 you're, you're mentioning that because we're we're talking in the context of him being a Christian pastor. Amen. You have the most popular professing Christian in the world that influences more young people than anybody else in the world right now, and who many of you maybe and others and listen to and allow your children to listen to. Perhaps maybe not. I don't know, but maybe you're not aware of this. But uh, this is Taylor Swift. She's come out with this ring endorsement just, you know, actually before this came out uh, of uh, Kabbalah Harris as well as uh, Tim Walls as the VP. And in fact, she 
uses her platform, which is huge. She has almost three, I think it's like 283, 284 million Instagram followers. I mean, that's that cover everybody in the country almost, you know, if you're if everybody in the country is part of the Instagram, but it's from all over the world. Uh, Taylor Swift, tragically, and I'm going to read what she, she writes, and she left this on Instagram, influenced a ton of people to vote for Kamala Harris. And she says, I also want to say, especially to first-time voters, remember that in order to vote, you have to be registered. I also find it's much easier to vote early. I'll link where to get registered and find early voting dates and info in my story. And listen to what she says. And this is interesting, Chad, why she says to vote Kamala Harris. I will be casting my vote for Kamala Harris and Tim Walls in the 2024 presidential election. I'm voting for Kamala Harris at Kamala Harris she has here because she fights for the rights and causes, I believe, uh, need a warrior to champion them. So why do you need a warrior to champion? I think she is a steady-handed, gifted leader, and I believe we can accomplish so much more in this country if we are led by calm and a calm and not chaos. A calm and not the chaos. Since her and Biden have been in together this last four years, right now, you know, Israel is getting launched. I mean, as of this airing, uh, the most, the biggest ballistic missile assault in human history. You got Hamas, you know, attacking them on a, last October 7th, you know, uh, from the Gaza Strip. You have Hezbollah from Lebanon attacking them, having to evacuate the northern part of Israel, the Golan Heights and so forth. Uh, you, now you have Iran, you know, as of the, uh, this show, uh, you know, this morning I wake up and see the news that the biggest ballistic missile assault ever from Iran. No wonder we don't want them to have nukes, right? And guess what? Their lack of leadership has allowed that scenario uh, to unfold uh, more and more and so forth. And not talking, you know, Russia going to Ukraine. So Taylor Swift, you know, she's saying, uh, she, she gives me the idea that she'll allow less chaos. What are you talking about? Crime rates through the roof right now, violent crimes. Oh, and by the way, why would we follow the choice emphasized by Taylor Swift when almost every one of her songs is about how she's made bad choices and regrets them. Come on now. Think, just think about that, okay, for a second. And so that, that just, you know, right there should, should sink her viewpoint. But she says this, this is, what's, this is what's heartbreaking. She says, I think she is a steady-handed, gifted leader, and I believe we can accomplish so much more in this country if we are led by calm and not chaos. By calm and not chaos. Now let's check this out. I was so heartened and impressed by her selection of running mate, Tim Walls, wow, who has been standing up for LGBTQ plus rights, right? And she goes on to talk about, you know, IVF and a woman's right uh, to her own body for decades. Wow, so when she's talking about women's rights, she's talking about a woman's right to her own bodies, and when it's couched in those terms, it's almost always, and this is, you know, pretty much everybody would take her to be referencing, the right to murder your child, you know? Uh, which is wicked. And she is like Satan, man, an angel of light that appears as though they're sweet and gentle, but brings you toward death and destruction. And this is very, very heartbreaking because you know what Tim Walls stands for? And she's so excited about the, the running mate that she's picked, Tim Walls, who could end up our president as well. Uh, not that he'd be much different than, uh, you know, the woke Kamala Harris, whose dad, by the way, uh, is a professor, uh, was a prof professor promoting Marxism. Okay, and she looks like your typical uh, liberal socialist from San Francisco, which we're not far from. And you can just see what uh, has happened to San Francisco as a result of those type of politics that's destroyed much of San Francisco. But what's interesting, Chad, when you look at Tim Walls and what he allowed, what, uh, what he brought into Minnesota uh, before he was you know, brought into potentially the White House, is he made it legal or illegal for parents to stop their children from, let's say, you know, your daughter's on the internet and she's on social media, one of millions of young people who are being introduced uh, to, you know, uh, sexual dysphoria, gender dysphoria, and being confused that there's really no male or female, you can kind of choose which one you want to be and so forth. And she gets wrapped up in this. And all of a sudden, your daughter's convinced uh, from social media that, yeah, you know what, I need to have a sex change because really I want to be a boy. And then the parents say, no, you know, honey, you were created by God as, as a gal and you're confused right now, uh, you, since you've been on the internet with all these weird friends you got now, you've been having all these strange views, and now you're not satisfied with your life, you feel the answer is to become a man. And guess what? They can't stop her, because guess what? Tim Walls has made it uh, 
acceptable now. He's made it a law to where the government can step in and take custody of your child. And you can't stop them. And they can put your child through, you know, judge, you know, see a judge, and then your child will end up uh, winning the case based on Tim Wall's laws typically. And then your child will undergo, you know, just total uh, radical surgery that will, they'll chop off a, a, a myectomy, they'll chop off her breasts, they'll put tubes in there, uh, they'll sterilize your child, never be able to have babies again. Uh, they, they will give her give them puberty blockers and uh, cross-sex hormones and all these different things because of Tim Wall's law. And now what happens, Chad, when we found out, we, we've interviewed, you know, uh, a former transgender person yeah. who talked about the incredible regret you have later in life. And there's more, there's so much suicide among people that go through this and then regret it later. Tim Walls is, he is wicked. I'm sorry. And so yeah. is Kamala. So for us to be promoting voting for uh, such wicked people is just absolutely heartbreaking. Uh, they're science deniers. You know, the Bible teaches there's a difference between male and female, but your biology, biology also teaches there's a difference between male and female. You don't have to consult your Bible. But when you do, you realize what God's design is. And then you need, it's important to use the Word of God to show people what truth really is in this regard. But I am just blown away. When I heard that, I was like with Ortland, and we've seen this with others as well. You expect it from Taylor Swift. I mean, come on. She promotes witchcraft in her music. So Christians shouldn't be listening to her music anyway. But she promotes, she uses the F word. She promotes all kinds of sexual perversion through her songs, one night, one night stands and everything else. She is a angel of light and be beware. But definitely don't go pull the trigger. I can't, I'm not going to tell you who to vote for and who not to vote for. I'm just going to say, guess what? I'm shocked that these people be promoting voting for Kamala and Walls. Yeah, I, you know, Joe, one of the things that really, I think the first person that I was like, are you kidding me? I didn't really know where he stood on some issues, but I had heard Adrian Gonzalez, who played f for first base for the Dodgers uh, for a number of years, and I had heard him share his testimony. I'd seen he had, you know, written a certain psalm every time he writes his uh, autograph on certain things. I was like, oh, wow, that's really cool. You know, pr praise the Lord. There's some someone on the Dodgers that's open about their faith. That's great. And then, you know, scrolling on our Twitter, all of a sudden it pops up uh, that Andrew Gonzalez is endorsing Kamala Harris. And I was like, bro, you proclaim Christ. It is one thing. And this is this is something that, that is important to note. OK, we obviously through the political cycles since 2016 and now, you know, from a pastoral care perspective, you've obviously dealt with people. Hey, this is what I think. And this is what I think. And they can be really strong opinions. And we can go, okay, well, here's here's what the Bible says. Some people said, oh, I don't want my uh, I don't want my president to even be a Christian. And you're like, well, you know, Proverbs 14 is really clear that righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a disgrace to any people. And and that's a fact. You can't get around that. And so you can't overlook the sins committed by your party either. And that includes Donald Trump or anyone else. And so when you see that, when you see the tides turning. And all of a sudden, guys like J.D. Vance take down some of the material that they had that was pro-life. All of a sudden, when you're watching these guys saying, oh, yeah, it's totally fine. The, you know, the pill that, that actually takes the life of the child. And it's literally something that, by the way, yes, a lot of these clinics are shutting down because they're not going there. But guess what? There is a ton of people being sent in the mail the thing to take the life of that's their right, child. That's right. And it's And we have talked about Trump and Vance and some of those compromises. More Other shows, than Probably more than else. Kamala. Yeah, but Kamala, correct. man, you're looking at, come on, open cesspool. Uh, absolutely. And, but we obviously, you know, as people of the book and not just simply people of, you know, hey, my political party, we have to be fair in pointing this out. But an endorsement by a professing Christian, whether it's an endorsement or this time I just have to do it, I have to, you know, plug my nose and, and 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 sign off to to Harris. I'm sorry, you can't. Yeah, that's and, my. And opinion. guess what? Kamala doesn't get in without a significant part of the Christian vote because so many people profess to be Christians. But when you got Steph Curry, another guy who's been out there claiming to be a Christian, yeah. yet you know, pro uh, LGBTQ, uh, pro I believe abortion and so forth. Yep. Man, it's just so that's how you know Satan sucks people into this movement. You can't just say, oh, so and so's a Christian, praise God, they thank Jesus at an award ceremony. You have to say, what's the fruit of this person's life? You know, do they take biblical stance? Do they stand up for the Jesus of the Bible? Are they about the gospel? Or are they about saying, is Jesus like a rabbit foot? 
you know, because they just want to be successful in their career. So they say his name once in a while, let's make some kind of positive confession. So you have to look at everybody. Yeah. And one of the things that's always bothered me is I've, I've seen some of the, you know, the woke brigade uh, that, that claim to be Christian and they'll say, well, the other side doesn't care about the poor. And I've heard plenty of people say this. And the, the truth is, is when you look at Detroit, when you look at San Francisco, when you look at a lot of the places that we talk about that are like, these are terrible areas to go to. These are people that claim they cared about the poor, but they were only using those poor people. And they claim to want people to be off drugs, but they're only using those people, honestly, as a pawn piece for them because they don't actually care because their policies ravage those communities. So many of the policies that have come in in, uh, you know, that say Democrat are really Marxist garbage, are are really just communistic garbage that they're sneaking in. Not that there aren't a ton of, you know, crony capitalism that takes place and the scratching of back that takes place from the lobbyists that, by the way, that shouldn't even be illegal. But nonetheless, when when you look at it, Joe, so many of these people that make that proclamation, oh, well, I care about more than just the pre-born. I care about all the way to the grave, right? And you need to care about taking the poor. I don't actually see them actually doing anything. Joe. Yeah, I see Christians doing more for the poor than Absolutely. any other group Every on earth by far. In fact, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because Planned Parenthood will say, yeah, but they only care about the babies. They don't care about the mothers. You know what? Compare what uh, crisis pregnancy clinics, Christian crisis pregnancy Amen. clinics, and there's hundreds of them throughout the nation, what they do for mothers after they give birth to their children, what they do for mothers uh, in general. And you see maternity, uh, you know, homes for, 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 for mothers. You don't see them. I don't see where are these homes for mothers that Planned Parenthood has. CPC has them all over the place, you know, and they help. So they continue to help. So that that verifies your point jo by Joe, far. What you're saying is, is so interesting because literally this last Lord's Day, I was doing announcements at Blessed Hope Chapel, and guess what? It was the last day to bring in your diapers for the local CPC. Amen. Uh, this last, oh, and by the way, that la Friday, our church was at a dinner for the local CPC to help provide for, guess what, women that were coming and also sharing their testimony of it was the CPC that saved their baby. We had already had their babies, still <laughs> being helped. and <laughs> Still Amen. being helped. Yeah, and our fellowship and many others uh, help out in that regard every year, not just the CPC, but other ministries as well. Uh, you know what, Chad, uh, as Christians regarding voting, you know, and people have different views and I can't show you a verse that says thou shalt vote and, or yeah. thou shalt not vote. But we, when I look at the scripture, I personally do vote. I don't always cast a vote for president because I look in California, my vote's insignificant on president, that is. And sometimes I just don't want to vote for a person that may go just way off the rails. But if it's an issue that I believe in some states, it does matter where you vote for president for sure. But, uh, and then I'd have to really look at it even harder. But in regard to issues, man, I'd hate for some issue that's, you know, anti-Christian kind of policy that would be installed that would lose by one vote because I didn't vote, you know, that would be a bummer. So I do I do personally a vote. I don't condemn those who don't. Uh, Romans 13, 4 states that for the one in authority is God's servant for your good. He's talking about government there. And certainly governments become evil when they become incredibly evil. Eventually God puts them down. Uh, but it's interesting, even though we're not commanded to vote, we are commanded to pray. And Paul writes, I urge you in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 3, I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings, and that would include Nero, who was the emperor of Rome at the time, who would behead Paul later, for kings and all those in authority, that we may, be, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God our Savior. So it's important to understand as Christians, uh, we do have a responsibility to be praying for our governing leaders. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 7. I think this is very instructive when I look at this in light of 1 Timothy chapter 2. Because, well, wait a minute, you know, but, you know, Jesus said my kingdom isn't of this world, and we emphasize that all the time. But guess what? Uh, the Bible tells us that we have a dual citizenship. The Bible says in Philippians 3.20, that uh, we are citizens of heaven uh, from whence we await our Savior. Amen. And Jesus is the King of kings and Lord of lords. But, right, and he, and by the way, uh, he is coming back, and we emphasize that more than anything else in regard to leadership and who should be leading. Jesus is going to be, and he is, the rightful king. But it's important to understand this. When they were in Babylon, which is the picture of the Babylon at the end, right? When they're in Babylon, which eventually Christians will have to be 
come out of her lest they partake of her sins and plagues because the Lord's judgment is coming. But right now we occupy till it comes and we preach the gospel. When they went and they were deported to Babylon because of their uh, the kingdom of Judah's uh, you know, rejection of God's law and so forth, and they, they were deported into Babylonian captivity, listen to what Jeremiah says. I think this is interesting. Chapter 29, verse 7. Jeremiah, this is when he was, they were exiled. He, he states this, quote, Seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. Meaning, hey, since you're going to be there, you know, pray for them. And, and and it's interesting, he says, seek the peace and prosperity of that country. Well, Chad, you mentioned earlier, the Proverbs say the righteousness of, of nation exalts that nation. Yeah. Well, if this nation becomes unrighteous, which America, the United States of America, has become incredibly unrighteous, uh, they won't be exalted. That Those nations, the scriptures say, that forget God will be turned into hell, Okay. So as I'm here as an ambassador for Christ, the Bible says that we're ambassadors for Christ. I represent the coming king, okay? And while I'm here, I'm supposed to seek the good of this country. And guess what? In Paul's day, they couldn't vote, man. You had an emperor, man, you, you, and so forth. Right now, we can't vote. So, And even if it doesn't affect me, Chad, my vote, and I, I say, you know what? This doesn't affect me, but I have to look at my neighbor, love my neighbor as myself. How's this going to affect the unborn? Because I'm like, I can't have a baby, but guess what? A lot of people are having babies, and those babies are my neighbors. How does this affect uh, the destruction of marriage, even though it's not going to affect my marriage, it's going to affect other people and so forth. So I believe it's impo- imperative that we, uh, not imperative, I don't want to be that strong about it, that it's important to consider voting for the reason that it's a way to love our neighbor and so forth and, and help and, and seek the prosperity of where we live, even as the Jews in Babylon were to do. Having said all that, Chad, getting back to the idea that we are ambassadors Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom was of this world, then my servants would fight. That's why we're not Christian nationalists. That's why we're not kingdom dominionists. Man, because when Jesus comes back, he's coming back with a sword protruding from his mouth. He's coming with eyes of fire. He's coming on his white stallion with the armies of heaven. And he will tread underfoot the, the, with the grapes, the grapes of wrath, man, as he d- destroys the wicked at his second coming. And it says there in Revelation 11, verse 15, that the, when Christ comes back, the kingdom of this world, which is run by Satan, will become the kingdom of Christ, okay? He's going to rule. So we're ambassadors. So my job as an ambassador, first and foremost, isn't voting. And this is the thing. For all those Christians saying, you got to go vote. You got to go vote. Why are you voting? That's a, Yeah, I think voting is pretty important. But guess what? It's even more important if you're a Christian to be an ambassador for Christ. And I want to say to those believers, are you sharing the gospel? Are you witnessing? Are you out on the streets lifting up the name of Jesus, man? Are you sending tracts? Are you passing tracts out to people? Are you witnessing to your neighbor? Are you sharing the gospel at your work and so forth? Because first and foremost, man, that's the, that's our first citizenship is, is the kingdom of heaven. And as ambassadors, we proclaim, we announce that his kingdom is coming because our king's coming, he's gonna take over this planet. So the kingdom of this world become the kingdom of Christ. What's the message? Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. That's what John the Baptist preached. That's what Jesus preached. And guess what? You want, you're like, man, I just wish, and this is Chad and my wish, we express it to you. I say all the time in the pulpit when I preach, man, that when people are complaining about what's going on in the world and everything else, I say, yeah, it's horrific. We talk about it quite often later what the scriptures say. But guess what? You got to say, thy kingdom come, man. You got to keep your focus on Jesus. Even so come, Lord Jesus. That should be our prayer because he's coming. And guess what? We can actually speed up his return. How do I know that? Because he, uh, 2 Peter chapter 3 says that God's not willing that any would perish, but that all would come to repentance. He's talking about this in the context of mockers saying, hey, how come Jesus hasn't come, and come yet in the last days? And Peter says the answer is that because he's not willing that any would perish, but that all would come to repentance. He's waiting for more people to be saved. Then he says, hasten or speed up. The Greek word means speed up. Hasten the coming of the day of the Lord. How do you speed it up? You preach the gospel. How does that speed up? Because Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24, verses 13 and 14, he that endures the end will be saved, and the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world. Then the end will come. When does the end come? After the gospel is preached in all the world. That's how you hasten the coming of the Lord, because not willing that any would perish. And then Paul says this in Acts chapter, or I'm sorry, Romans chapter 11. Paul says that when the fullness of the Gentiles has come in, that last Gentile gets saved. You might be that last Gentile that's holding up Jesus' return eventually, right? When that last Gentile gets saved, the fullness of the Gentiles comes in, then the deliverer will come from Zion. And then he'll turn on godliness from Jacob because then they'll see the one that they pierce. And all Israel, Paul says in that same passage, will be saved. That is that believing remnant will come 
the faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So our emphasis should be the gospel right now, preaching Jesus, because politics are not going to change the world. Well, if Trump got in, man, it would change everything. He was in for four years, guys. Uh, and it was way better under him. I mean, COVID came. I don't blame him for COVID, but it was way better under him than it was under Biden. I'll say that, right? And I'm not saying to vote Trump, but I'm just saying that he wasn't the Savior during those four years. And that whenever a Savior does arrive, and it's not Jesus, it's going to be a false Savior ultimately, because only he's going to come back to save us. Amen. God bless you guys. We love you guys. Hey, Joe Schimmel here. We want to thank you for watching. We want to also encourage you not to forget to sign up or subscribe to Good Fight Ministries' YouTube channel. We have the most amazing content. We also have the very popular Good Fight radio show where we examine all kinds of things in light of Scripture, as well as 5.11 News, which is also very eye-opening. And we also have mind-blowing video exposés that you won't see anywhere else. And our 24-7 online radio station, the Good Fight Radio Network, as well as my sermons from Blessed Hope Chapel over on the Blessed Hope Chapel YouTube channel. So thanks again. We'll see you later. And we just pray that the Lord blesses you richly as you seek His face. And this week's featured product is Wrestling with Discipleship. You can get it at wrestlingwithdiscipleship.com, goodfight.org, or amazon.com.